So if we use these basic laboratory-confirmed uh, processes, we can model the formation of galaxies and the formation of stars. Because what comes out of this, that NR is a constant, means that as the density of plasma in a galaxy increases, the size, the mass of stars that is formed from those plasmas decreases. So we can predict a sequence of formation of stars that starts with the largest stars. And don't have time to go through this in detail, but basically what we find is stars that are massive enough to form supernova and therefore produce heavy metals are confined to a disk. And stars that are from 12 to 4 solar masses are formed in a sequence in the bulk of the galaxy. Now, we don't have an animation for this, but we're about to produce one uh, in the coming month. So what we predict here, and this was predicted back in the 1980s in the papers I published, is that in the early stage of a galaxy, the galaxy is dominated by large stars that have very fast um, fusion burning. So they uh, are about 100 times brighter per unit mass than the sun. And they burn hydrogen to helium far faster. So that's where we get the 24% helium. And again, this was predicted uh, in some detail in papers I published back in the 80s. Tired of inflation, wars, and inequality caused by the energy crisis? LPP Fusion is developing a solution that could allow everyone to have cheap, clean, off-grid, and sustainable fusion energy. Invest now as we seek to bring this potentially life-changing technology to market. For more information, visit lppfusion.com. More recently, we have complete confirmation of this from uh, data from HST and then later JWST, in which we find that extremely bright galaxies, ultra-luminous infrared galaxies, have a ratio of their luminosity to their mass that's a hundred times that of the sun. So this is the sun is, uh, solar luminosity is down around this line. And the galaxy is about a factor of five lower, our Milky Way galaxy today. So you have the ability of these galaxies with um, these much larger stars to produce the right amount of helium in only 200 million years. And we did these calculations back in 1989 for deuterium, helium, lithium, beryllium, and boron, and we redid them with better data uh, five years ago, and they very much match observation. The processes that produce uh, deuterium, lithium, beryllium, and boron come from the cosmic rays that stars produce that go out into the interstellar stellar medium and produce these light elements by spallation. So actually deuterium is produced by collisions between uh, protons and lithium and beryllium and boron are produced by breaking apart heavier uh, uh, nuclei sit, such as the nuclei of carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. So we have good agreement with uh, thousands of points of data of helium abundance, lithium abundance, and beryllium abundance. So this is the evolution of these uh, abundances versus the abundance of, for example, oxygen, which we know becomes more abundant as the history of the galaxy proceeds.